Hello and welcome to I am not in the center of the frame. Uh, hello and welcome to a new episode of the Yarn Flakes podcast. My name is Audrey, I am a knitwear designer from the southwest of France and this is a podcast where I chat about my um, knitting, whether it's my own designs or my personal projects. Hi and happy 2023. I wish you a very good year, uh, good luck. I hope you had decent holidays um, and that you are um, refreshed as much as possible. A new environment because this is the first video in my new house so it's going to need a little bit of getting used to. As you can see I have light coming on my face. I have sheep right there who refuse to be entertaining and be filmed. However, they make noise and I hear them and it's distracting. Um, the good thing about this place is that I will have a few um, areas where I can film. So we might enjoy some different decor for the podcasts. Um, uh, it will vary depending on the light that day, the sound, uh, but yeah. So I'm getting used to, you can tell me how much you like certain places. Um, there will be a couple of places in this room which does get the best light and I would also like whenever possible to film in my office uh, with my yarn but it doesn't get the best light so that might not happen until the summer. But yeah, that's it. Radiator here. I thought that was better than the staircase, which is just there. <laughs> so that's it. Um, I have a little podcast with you. I have been knitting quite a lot over the holidays. I have been working on some personal projects that um, I've been really wanting to cast on, so I have been enjoying that. I have also been submitting design uh, to magazines because a couple of indie um, knitwear magazines decided to have the, their submission call right on the holidays, which I think is a bit of a passive-aggressive move. Uh, but uh, of course, I was really inspired. And um, yeah, if you don't know that about me, I'm a bit of... I'm the spammer uh, designer. <laughs> when I'm inspired by um, a mood board or a theme, I just send like... 10 ideas and yeah so that happened over the holidays I got really inspired by the submission calls so I've been working on that um, but I do have quite a few projects to catch you up on so I will spread them over a couple of episodes so if you have seen me work on something whether it's in the vlogmas uh, episodes that I've posted over December or on social media and you don't see it in this episode, it will be in the next one, uh, which I will publish mid or end of January. And yeah, so I'm going to start. You can find timestamps to all the sections of the podcast in the description down below. So if you want to skip anything, if you see that I'm starting to ramble and you're not into that, <laughs> you can skip. And I also put links to everything that I talk about, the patterns and the yarns that I will mention. I write everything, uh, the names, the colorways. I also put links to specific shops when it's not obvious. If there's a specific shop where I bought a certain yarn, I put the link there. Uh, I just want to put emphasis on that because I always get questions. Um, yeah, I'm not the most articulate person and sometimes I will mispronounce things. So if you don't understand a brand or something that I'm saying, uh, just know that all the information is in the description. I am going to start with a design that I have just re-released. This is the Lueur Shawl, which I have initially published in issue 8 of Making Stories magazine, which was the last autumn issue. And it is now available as a single pattern on Ravelry and Payhip. So this is an asymmetrical triangle, as you can see. You start here at this end and you constantly increase on one edge. And you are going to alternate four different textures. So you have this one, which is kind of a checkered knit pearls and twisted stitches, right twist lines. This here, which is a 
two color slip stitch basically made with slip stitches this texture which is kind of gonna be the theme of the episode this is uh, twisted stitches and garter ribbing with some bubbles which are in uh, alternating areas and the last texture which is this mosaic like garter slip stitch pattern so and then you repeat a second time so this is a beginner friendly show and that the stitches contained here are uh, fairly simple basically the most complex ones would be the twist the slip stitches and the bubble but you have a video for the bubbles and everything else is explained the instructions comes both charted and with written instructions so in case you're not comfortable reading charts whether it's because you can't you can't read them it's not made for everyone uh, or because especially with two color slip stitches it can be a bit confusing uh, there is uh, written instructions row by row so there's that and yeah this is a good way to learn how to make all of these stitches this is why i just love random multi-textured shawls you can just make a mix of everything and you just have simple textures but you are able to sort of get the hang of a new thing and yes this is how it looks on the wrong side i know some people are always interested to see um the motifs the repeats are all very short and so even when you have slipped stitches it just lays nicely flat so yeah this is a rather big shawl um it uses two colors as you can see and i used bouclelen which is a french brand from Brittany, merinos angora yarn so i was really really happy to get to try this yarn because i have talked about this before i do not like angora um it's too warm for me um i am someone who's not particularly uh sensitive to cold and also i live in the south of france so mm. uh, things get really uncomfortable uh i don't like the fluffy yeah i yeah i see you <laughs> sheep they're just staring at me like what what is the doofus doing um um like the you know some sweaters have the fluffy insides and i also just kind of don't like that sensory thing um so i don't like angora when it's too much of a yarn however this only has 10 percent angora and 90 percent ah non super wash merino which is a french merino which is a little bit more wooly or rustic as you would say and um I usually find the yarns that mix woolly fibers with something super soft and sleek like silk or angora. I find those blends really interesting. It just has a, a funny texture to it. And I was really curious to try this one. And so when Making Stories um, chose this yarn, uh, if you don't know, when you submit designs to a magazine, you um, give yarn suggestions for the design, but the magazine eventually chooses the yarn and the colors that they will use. They're the one organizing the yarn support. Um, so when Making Stories told me that they wanted to use this yarn, I was really happy. And I really like it, I really do. Um, it is very soft. If you're familiar with Arles Merino from other brands, such as Terrerum Natura, for example, this is so much softer, but it still has the very interesting blooming uh, squishiness and I really, really love the definition. You'll see that I'm using the yarn again on a personal project, which I started later, and I just really, really like the feel of it. So yeah, it's, um, it's a sport weight yarn. But it, has, it really has a fingering weight meterage. It comes in 100 gram skeins, which has 400 meters. However, it is quite plump and it blooms so much that it does knit up at a sport weight gauge. So you need sport weight yarn for this shawl. However, if you were to use fingering weight yarn and you have a bit of a different gauge, uh, it would work out. Uh, you can basically 
here in this last section you can continue knitting until you run out of yarn. I don't recommend modifying the sections within because this has been calculated so that <laughs> it repeats well but at the end you can just go on and make the show a bit longer if it needs to. But yes, that is it, that is Lueur. I really like this shape shawl. I haven't a lot of them planned yet. I actually am in the mood for triangles, perfect triangles or squares or other type of modular shapes. But I do really like just uh, how easy it is to wrap yourself in these asymmetrical triangles. It's just really nice to wear like this, I think, um, when I'm working or just sitting. And yeah, I think I've said everything. So the pattern is now available on its own on my shops and it is at a discount for the re-release. So with the code Lueur, you have 15% off uh, on Ravelry. So I will write it down because I know that it's a choice <laughs> to name a shawl with such a word with so many U's and U uh, and none of it is pronounced. Uh, I'm having lots of fun teaching, trying to teach French to my partner and uh, it's a, it's, it is a struggle, uh, <laughs> mostly because I'm a poor teacher, but yeah, that is it for this re-release which I hope you enjoy. Uh, the colors, which I forgot the colors in, in the French podcast, I forgot the colors in the English podcast. I am surprisingly consistent. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I record the podcast in two languages, um, one after the other. And so sometimes I have weird echo. <laughs> um, I used the natural white and this is Verdier, which is an olive that is more yellowish. It's a really nice and warm uh, greenish, pale green, which I really, really enjoy. So yeah, that is it for Lueur. And I am going to move on to what I'm wearing, which is my finished object for this podcast. This is one of my designs. It is a second, the second time I knitted it. I um, released this back last summer. It is the Elanide sweater, which is the basic top-down fingering wear raglan. The original sample had stripes of pastel colors and this marled yarn. And I really wanted to make a fully marled version. So that's what I did. I have been knitting on this for quite a while. I think I started it in September or October, but since it's plain stocking, it's basically my relaxed knitting. And ironically, these simple knits tend to take me longer because I just, um, most of the time when I knit, I want something a little bit more stimulating. So the things that are plain stocking, you you'll see I have another project like this. Um, it usually takes me longer. So I am happy still to have it finished now. It's uh, made in Artemis yarn Silene, which is a lovely, lovely marled fingering weight. It has 80% superwash merino, 20% myelon, and it's basically a two-ply with one white, one black. It is really, really soft and really light and pleasant wear. I'm sorry for the, <laughs> the pleat here. Um, that's the thing. I tend to not want to wear my finished objects before I can show them to you on the podcast. And since I'm not wearing them, well, they're staying folded. And now there's visible fold lines. So it's a bit <laughs> shitting myself in the foot there. But you can still kind of see. Uh, top down, you can see. I knitted this one on the larger size. My original sample was more fitted. This I knitted a size 4, which gives me about 20-ish centimeter ease. And yeah, it is really nice and pleasant to wear. It's going to be really nice up until the spring. It is fine, just a heads up. It is relatively uh, fine thread. 
it's uh, very sleek, it slides nicely on the needle, it's really pleasant to knit with. And yeah, I'm really happy I have my Marled sweater. Like I said, this is one of my designs, which has been published already last summer. But yeah, happy to have a second sample, which is kind of gonna be the theme next year. I am just in the mood to make 25 billion versions of all my design ideas. I just really like showcasing different versions and you'll see. That's what I started doing with one of my personal work in progress. But especially when there's a color uh, situation, <laughs> basically, I just, yeah, it's, it's very interesting for me to check the testers project and the knitting project. So if you've been wanting some color inspiration, you can check out the Elanid uh, project page on Ravelry because initially it's a striped design. So you can have lots of fun varying the striped uh, effect, whether you make thick, thin stripes, all of them the same or some different, how many color you used, etc. And it's really, really fun to see everyone's uh, creativity in their color choice. I'm someone who's really bad at choosing colors. <laughs> um, I tend to, I, I'm, I really have a hard time straying from the designer's initial choice. I've been like, there are so many projects that I want to make right now, personal projects from other designers, um, especially Sahi. Sahi Nordlun is currently working on a bunch of sweaters and I want to make all of them. Uh, can she please stop? <laughs> um, and I just I can't see them in different colors. <laughs> it's very hard for me. Um, like one of her latest color work designs, which is like black and white, I just I want the same. So yeah, it's really convenient for me to find patterns that use different colors on Ravelry and just check the projects of other knitters. I tend to do this as well for um, my own designs. Um, when I have a color work design, for example, uh, I am just so grateful for everyone's uh, great taste in color choice because then I will see a color combination that is so brilliant from one of my testers or someone who knits the pattern and I will be like, mm, filing that up for later and then I come back with a new design using that same color combination and pretend that I'm so smart and so... <laughs> good at color uh, management, whereas actually I stole the idea from someone else. Um, but yeah, it's um, it's really useful to see different projects like this. So in case you're in the need for some color vibe, um, this is a fun uh, Ravelry area to check the Elanid sweater. So yeah, that's it. Just a little rambling. Um, I am going to move on to a couple personal works in progress, uh, personal-ish. The first one is a sweater that I am making for my partner. So, I am making the So Basic pullover from Maxime Sir. So, uh, I've had this project in my queue for a very long time. I had gotten this yarn for it, which is Lana Grossa Cool Wool Melange yarn. Uh, this is a superwash merino, which is kind of a sport weight. It has 160 meters per 50 grams and it's really plump and tightly round and tight, tightly spun round yarn. Um, so it's a bit confusing on their website because there's different listings for kind of the same yarn. There's cool wool, there's, there's a listing for just cool wool, a listing for cool wool melange, and then there's a listing for cool wool solid melange print and it's the same yarn it's just that all the colors are spread into three different listings and i noticed because i had to buy more i'm running out of yarn i'm using more yarn than anticipated and that what the pattern recommends for because i don't have the right row gauge um and i had to buy more of this and i had trouble finding the color <laughs> again um, I'm really, um, I'm hoping the dye bath will not be so different, but I do think I will have to alternate anyway. But this is the colorway 152 and it's kind of like burgundy, uh, it's red and 
black marled basically and it's darker than this it's more it's more like a proper even plum kind of color and it's really beautiful um i the sunday stick sweater initially calls for fingering weight um however my partner he is really cold <laughs> cold no he's not cold he's not a cold person Audrey he's just it feels the cold a little bit more and so fingering weight sweaters are just too thin for him um so what I wanted to do is I wanted to use this yarn which is more of a sport um really plump and knit it tightly so I'm getting a really nice dense fabric I have stitch gauge uh, but I don't have row gauge so th this is why I'm using a lot more yarn um top down raglan simple uh, basic you start with the ribbing you do short rows you do the raglan you have this uh, basically it's just a basic like the name says uh, stock in it except on the sleeves you have this uh, seven by one rib which you have to carry yourself so if that's something that is bothering you when you don't have a full repeat of something uh, just be aware of it but it's like really simple <laughs> and really beginner friendly in my opinion the only thing is that I'm not so sure I read properly is for the sleeve decreases is you have that slip stitch in the center here and you can see that my decreases on one side are right next to that slip stitch whereas on the other side there's a purl stitch before and I'm just confused <laughs> I don't think I read that properly because in the end it's supposed to be so that the purl columns merge into the ribbing the one by one ribbing and I assumed that the first row of the round, the first stitch of the round, sorry, the slip stitch initially, would become a knit stitch and then knit purl, knit purl and, and with the purl. But I, apparently no, not for this size actually, I'm knitting size L, size large. I don't know, I think I've been really distracted by the unicorn drawings in the pattern, uh, but in any case. Uh, it's just really a simple knit, which is why it's taking me longer again. I started it in December and of course it was supposed to be a Christmas present. Uh, I'm lucky that my pat partner's birthday is early February, so basically when I miss the holiday deadline, I can be like, it was scheduled for your birthday all along, so I get one month extra um, <laughs> for him. But yeah. I have made one sleeve. I basically stopped just before the point where I'm supposed to start the ribbing. Now I'm knitting on the body and I've done about this length. Same thing, I'm gonna knit until the point where I would have started the hem. Then it's gonna try it on so that I can see if I need to modify any length because he's, um, he likes, it's very pe peculiar about <laughs> what he likes <laughs> in terms of length. So yeah. That is the plan. And you see, I have one ball attached to the body, one ball attached to this sleeve, and one extra. So I definitely don't have enough. My row gauge is too tight. So it's not a bad estimation on the pattern part. Because um, I have to make more rows. Uh, I'm getting a nice firm fabric, which I hope will keep him warm. It's a really soft, basic... Um, merino but yeah initially the design has a, a pocket like a leather patch pocket leather or faux leather uh, shown here i don't think i would do this i don't know quite where to find one half real leather and i don't know where to find um any good substitutes and i yeah i think it looks good in the original sample designs sample colors but I don't quite know what color would look good with this so I don't think I'm going to do this but yeah the basic simple knit which hopefully will be finished <laughs> by the beginning of February but yeah I have one last work in progress which I wanted to show you and it's a, a second prototype for Dachyan, which is a design that is published in 
the winter issue of Pom Pom. So it's, where is it? It's here somewhere. It's at the beginning. There it is. This design, which is, like I said, available in Pom Pom 43. So it's a um, multi version, multi option design. Basically, you have a vest, you have a full sweater, you have a v-neck, you have a round neck, you can also make it as uh, make a summer version and you can also skip the bubbles in case you're not a bubble person. And so this is my sample, the sleeveless version. So when you're making a design for a magazine, the sample that you knit as the designer belongs to you. Uh, Pom Pom graciously knitted, uh, had knitted the sweater version so i don't have a sweater version and i need one and in fact i have planned three different versions of this design because i just yeah i just really want to showcase everything that's possible i want to make a summer version with the sleeveless um, option and a v-neck and i want to make a version without bubbles as well uh, v-neck full sweater without the bubbles because the texture which is actually similar to this one in the lure show um, is really beautiful as well without the bubbles and i want to be able to show all possibilities so this is the first one i'm planning to make all of these um prototypes samples uh, throughout the year, the pattern will be released individually at the end of 2023. Always the <laughs> beginning of the year, we're like, what year is it? <laughs> I did my accounting and I painfully <laughs> firstly wrote January 2022 and then went back and was like, no, 2023. So, needs getting used to. Um, so, Tachyan will be re-released uh, by myself at the end of the year. So throughout the year, I'm going to prepare a bunch of the different samples so that I can show everything that you can make with the design. Um, and this is going to be a sweater with sleeves, round neck, and it has the bubbles. And I wanted to use the Merino Sangura from Bouquelen because I loved it as a show and I was really curious to see how I would feel as a sweater, if it would be too warm for me, how? Because I do absolutely adore the stitch definition in this yarn. And it's just really, really pleasant to knit. It's really nice to wear as around my neck. So I was curious to see, can this be a new favorite yarn, <laughs> even for garments? So this is what I'm making. I am using the colorway Carros, which is um, coach, uh, Cinderella coach, which is why it's pumpkin color, which I thought was a really clever and cool name. Um, it's not a color that I think particularly suits me. Um, things that are too yellow or proper orange. Uh, <laughs> um, but I I'll wear lipstick because I just, I love it so much, this color. So I don't care <laughs> if it doesn't suit me. Um, it's okay, actually. I don't know, it's not that bad. Uh, it's not as bright as it seems to be showing on camera. It's more like a reddish mustard, so to say. And yeah, so it's a bottom-up sweater. Uh, and I'm making all the bubbles and I'm going to slowly make my way through this. So I plan to make this one, like I said, with sleeves, round neck, and I plan to make a summer version, v-neck sleeveless, which will not have the bubbles. Uh, I think I'm going to use some cotton merino yarn from Knitting for Olive for that. And I plan to make a v-neck full, swe full sweater with sleeves without the bubbles as well. So in the end, I will have two bubbles, two bubble-less <laughs> versions and uh, various different necklines and sleeve situation. Um, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to have my little stack of Dachian and to show all the possibilities. It's really going to be a thing this year. I have planned to make several samples of quite a few designs. I just, yeah, I just 
feel like showing people how to um, customize uh, some of the most obvious options. I've already started last year making different versions of certain designs which had um, built-in options within the pattern, but it's going to be a little bit more this year. I think I'm going to regret it, <laughs> considering some of the designs that I have planned to knit several times. Um, but I just, yeah, I think it's important and that people sometimes need help projecting themselves. Like I said, myself, I have such a hard time um, not copying the designer's color charts that I, I understand that it's a, it's a good thing to see all the possibilities. So this is one case of this that um, I think will be quite common next year for my designs. So yeah, that's it. That's it for this podcast. Um, I wanted to finish it by talking a little bit about my Patreon uh, mandatory yay, advertisement section. Um, so I have a Patreon page where you can support my business and basically Patreon, if you don't know, is a system that allows you to subscribe. You have three different tiers on my Patreon, two euros, five euros, 10 euros. You can pay in dollars. You can pay in, uh, I have someone that paid with Aussie dollars, I think, um, which is the first time. I think they added them recently, which is cool. Uh, there's US dollars, Canadian dollars, pounds, euros, and apparently Australian dollars. Um, mm -hmm. So you don't have to uh, pay conversion fees and weird things. Um, so yeah, I um, have this for you. It's basically a way for you to purchase patterns. So if you've been wanting to buy a pattern, especially if you're looking at a, a neck accessory or a garment pattern, going through Patreon is actually more affordable. This is one way that I wanted to make my patterns more accessible. Patreon is a place where you basically you get one free pattern per month at the five euro tier and two free patterns at the 10 euro tiers. And at the same time, you have access to a bunch of uh, special content that is exclusive to Patreon. So I record videos in French, but I subtitle them in English and they have different themes. Uh, they're uh, creative vlogs. For example, there is one about creating the Lueur Shawl. Um, if you're curious about the process of designing for a magazine, I have made a vlog uh, about this from the start. I talked about my submission, I talked about the process of um, writing and the pattern and making the sample for the magazine, etc. And this was last September's video, for example. And there's different things. Uh, I sometimes have yarn reviews, sometimes more technical chats, uh, discussions about some knitwear constructions, discussions about certain techniques, etc. And this month the theme is decreases. So it's a more of a basic video about different type of decreases, showing how to make them and what they're good for, why you would use certain ones in certain situations, etc. And yeah, the good thing is when you join Patreon, you have access to all the videos that have been published before. So I do want to insist because sometimes people feel like they have to justify when they leave Patreon and I, you really don't have to do this. Um, it's a non, um, it's a subscription, <laughs> but you can basically just leave after one month. Uh, and I really encourage people to just, um, whenever you would like a pattern, you just come on over on Patreon, you drop here and then you leave <laughs> instantly and you check out what's available and see if you like it. And there are so many um, great creative people over on Patreon, which I highly recommend you do check um, whether it's craft related or other topics that you would enjoy. Um, there are a lot of artists who are worth your uh, attention. And so I really encourage people to just be a little butterfly and coming and going on Patreon, basically. Um, and yeah, whenever you join Patreon, you can see everything that has been published. There's a few um, exclusive designs as well that are there for you. And yeah, I also wanted to give an overview of the plans that I have for this year over on Patreon, because there is a way for you to subscribe uh, in advance for a full year. And this way you get about a month and a half 
free, so to say. So in case you are certain <laughs> that you will bear me, uh, bear with me, bear me, you will stand, stand me, I don't know which word to use. Um, I just read, um, I just read the Terry Pratchett book, which had the bear, 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 bear joke. And so it's on my mind. <laughs> so if you're sure that you will um, suffer me <laughs> for a year, you can subscribe in advance for a year on Patreon. And in case you've been considering that, I did want to um, give an overview of the plans. So I plan to make, as usual, some behind the scenes vlogs some basic videos on decreases, increases, seaming as well, seaming techniques. I also plan a few videos regarding garment construction, so going over how a drop shoulder, uh, a raglan are made, basically, like what's involved, how you build one, just so that you're more comfortable making patterns that maybe are not so uh, beginner friendly, or in case you would like to implement your own modifications. And we will also talk at the end of the year about um, changing a neckline, widening it, tightening it, changing a v-neck to a round neck and vice versa. Um, yeah, some yarn reviews are planned as well. That's the idea over on Patreon for this year. But yeah, if you are at all interested, um, I would love for you to come and hang out there. Uh, all the links are in the pattern description. The pattern description, the video description. Ah. Um, yeah, uh, thank you so much uh, for watching this podcast uh, and for your support over last year. I want to say again, Happy New Year and wish you very well for 2023. Thank you so much for your support, whether it's just about watching the video, um, leaving a comment and such. It's very, very well uh, appreciated and it's really motivating. So, yeah. I will see you again in a couple of weeks, I believe. Have a lovely rest of the day and I'll see you next time. Bye.